Hi there, it's Nicole for Pretty Pink Posh, and today I have a card featuring the new Scalloped Squares dies and the Iridescent Mini Star Confetti, and I've paired them with some images from the Rainy Days stamps and dies that were previously released. I am choosing to use shades of reds and pinks. This is a card that would work for any occasion, but I was kind of inspired by the upcoming February holidays. Um, I love anything in pinks and reds, so that's kind of where the color scheme came, for, came from for this card. I am stamping the images on some smooth white cardstock. I am using the Lawn Fawn Lob Lobster Red ink and the Black Licorice ink. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the coordinating dies. Now I hadn't used these yet, so I need to snip them apart. I really highly recommend these snips scissors. They make it so easy to trim any of these nesting dies apart, where some of those little images would be really, really hard to just kind of twist out of there. The scissors make it really easy. I'm going to use a little post-it tape to hold these dies in place and then I'll run them through my Big Shot die cutting machine. I do have the magnetic platform, but I find that sometimes the dies will migrate and move towards each other. So as a little extra, or extra caution, I always like to tape them in place when die cutting more than one die at a time. I'm gonna go ahead and lay my little pieces all to the side and get everything die cut and then I am going to grab some watercolor cardstock and use the larger of the two scalloped squares dies. This is a brand new die from Pretty Pink Posh for the January, re January release. I'm going to use both the frame and the inside piece. I didn't quite get it die cut all the way. It might have been on the edge or something so I'm just going to line it up and run it back through. Next I am going to take a piece of fun foam and I'm going to coat both sides with the stick it paper. This is going to make it instant instantly a sticker on both sides. The reason I'm doing this is it's going to make it much easier to assemble the shaker if there's already adhesive on the fun foam. This also eliminates the need to use foam adhesive because the fun foam is going to give me my dimension. The stick it just makes each side of the frame sticky, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that out. I can just save that inside piece for some smaller die cuts for another project and keep that frame piece. And I will be layering all of these pieces. Plus, I'm going to need a square for the acetate and I will need a square for the background. And I'm going to use a lawn fawn die that's four inches because that's what size the scalloped frame is. Now on this inside watercolor die cut piece, I am applying Picked Raspberry Distress Ink and Spun Sugar Distress Ink. I'm not gonna color the entire square. Instead, maybe about um, three quarters of it or so. Definitely get lighter there near the bottom. And I'm gonna blend those two colors together really well so it kind of has a seamless transition from dark to light. I'm going to take the distru Distress Sprayer and spritz the background. Let that sit for a few seconds and then dab that up with a dry paper towel. You can see it leaves a great distressed background. I'm going to set that aside to air dry for a little bit while I work on the rest of the card. Once that background is dry, I'm going to take the little Falling Hearts stamp from the Rainy Days stamp set. Every stamp I'm using here today is from the Rainy Days stamp set. And using the Lobster Red ink again, I'm going to stamp a scattering of these hearts all over the background. I kind of laid out my greetings and one of the umbrellas to give me a guideline or an idea of where I want to stamp all of these hearts. Originally, I started with just the red, and once I got them, I decided I really needed more than just these red hearts. While I love these, and I 
could have stamped more of these all over the background. I felt like they were a little bit too bright if I if I would go ahead and stamp more of them. So I kind of kept to just the ones you see here and then I'm going to go back to my distress inks and I'm going to stamp some picked raspberry and spun sugar heart clusters to really kind of finish off the design and it's also going to help blend those hearts all into the background so that the red in some of those heart heart clusters doesn't look quite so glaringly like oh here's some hearts um, I really like the addition of the two other colors in this I think it really makes the background more interesting and the sponge sugar is so light that it kind of just gives those illusion of hearts there I'm gonna take two of the greetings now and I'm gonna take my acetate piece, which I did go ahead and die cut. It's not in the video, but I did die cut that using that four inch stitched square die from Lawn Fawn. And I, right on the acetate, I'm going to stamp the Brighter Days sentiment and above that, the Wishing You sentiment using Stays On Cotton White ink. Then on my Nina White cardstock again, probably would have been better if I had used watercolor cardstock, but I wasn't thinking about that. I'm gonna take the cloud from the Rainy Day stamp set and I'm going to ink up my cloud, spritz it with water once, I did that off screen, and then stamp that on the cardstock. I'm gonna hold that there for just a second and then release it. Now, I did it once before and you probably saw that it really kind of ran. It was just too wet. I'm gonna repeat that with the spun sugar ink. It's gonna give some nice watercolored looking clouds. I, wanted, I went ahead and kept those in the shades of pink. And then once I had those clouds, I decided I needed another umbrella. This was one of those cards where my original idea kind of evolved as I worked on the card and that's okay. You definitely don't have to stick to your original plan all the time. It's okay to evolve and change your mind and add to or take away. Once I have all of these elements, I can start putting everything together. Inside the shaker, I'm going to have one of the umbrellas and the clouds plus the confetti material. On the outside of the shaker, I'm going to have the other umbrella, plus the greeting is on top of the acetate as well. So just kind of a great way to layer and add lots of interest to your design. I'm applying that small umbrella, the small umbrella pieces with liquid adhesive, and I'm using the acrylic block to just hold those down until the glue dries. Now on my frame, I probably should have gone ahead and die cut that with stick it on the back of it as well, but I didn't. Not a big deal, I'm just gonna run some adhesive around these edges. It's going to stick to the acetate really easy. I thought it would be quite a bit harder to get the fun foam to stick to the acetate and the cardstock using that kind of dots tape runner. So I'm glad I used the stick it there. If your transparency has that film on it, make sure you remove that. I just removed the film from the back of mine. Then I'm going to peel off that stick it material, which makes my, that fun foam a sticker. And I'm going to apply that right to the back of the frame. So it's the frame, the transparency, then the fun foam with the stick it on it. Just careful to make sure you line it up perfectly and it is very sticky. The stick it is extremely sticky. There's what that's gonna look like. Go ahead and attach my umbrella to the front of the shaker now. I like to do any assembling before I add that shaker material and that's kind of the last step when you're creating a shaker. You wanna keep the addition of the actual shaker material to the very end. What I love about this new iridescent mini star confetti, there's also gold and silver. I, I just love the iridescent. Part of the reason that I went with the pinks and reds, I love the pinks and reds this time of year, but the iridescent looks so pretty with the pinks, I think. 
um, makes it really super fun. It, it coordinates well inside this particular shaker. It will go with many colors, but I really liked it with the pinks here. Here is my square that I die cut from regular cardstock that I attached my background to. That's going to be the back of the shaker. And then I'm going to pretty liberally fill my shaker with that iridescent mini star confetti. Go ahead and peel off the other side of the backing paper for that stick it on the back of the fun foam. Take the back of the shaker, attach that to the front, flip it over and make sure I press it down everywhere so that it's nice and secure, and then shake it up and you have a super cute shaker card that works for so many occasions. One final thing that I decided to do kind of last minute, again, another one of those evolutions is add some glossy accents to that umbrella on the front of the card. I'll add that to a card base that is four and a quarter inch square and that will finish up my card design today. Thanks for watching this video showcasing new dyes and confetti releases from the January Pretty Pink Posh release. Here are a couple more Pretty Pink Posh videos you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.